Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Zipora Mwangi and I'm excited to have you on board. On this channel, we get to have conversations about lifestyle, education and kingdom living. And on today's session, we are going to be addressing dating part two. So if you've not caught up with dating part one, kindly just put a pause on this and then go back and watch what we had last week. And I just want to remind you that really um, this YouTube channel is based on Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23, that talks about buy truth and do not sell it. Also, wisdom, instruction, and understanding. So we are really just looking into getting the truths of the word of the Lord so that they can help us to do life well. So without further ado, let's get into the conversation. Welcome. So welcome. We are addressing dating part two and we are going to draw our reference from Genesis chapter 24 and we are going to look at a couple of verses and see what are some of those truths and principles that we can pick and see how we can do dating much better. So Genesis chapter 24, I'm going to start off by reading verse 1 to 9. And we are just going to see what's happening and then we are going to continue to draw lessons from different verses. The Bible says Abraham was now very old and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to his senior servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. So first we can see here that Abraham has gotten to the place where he looks at his son and he feels he's at an age that he needs now to get a wife. And we can see that he takes on the responsibility on himself as a father to do something about his son getting married. And uh, so let's move on to verse 5. The servant asked him, what if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you came from? Make sure that you do not take my son back there. Abraham said, the Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land and who spoke to me and promised me on oath saying to your offspring, I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you'll be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master Abraham and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. So verse 7 is showing us where Abraham's faith is. He believes that because the Lord had sent him into this new land and, and, at, and at this particular time he felt that his son needed to get a wife, he was confident of the fact that the God that spoke to him told him to come out of the, the land of where his family was living and to take him to the land of Canaan, he was confident that he this God would send an angel before you so that you get a wife for my son from there. And this level of confidence, if you are watching this particular video as a parent and even as future parents, I would like us to know that we can have our confidence when it comes to matters, marriage, as far as our children are, are concerned as, as far as uh, the, our children's children are also concerned is that we can have confidence in the God that we serve, that he is able to lead these young men and young women to get husbands and wives. He is able to lead them. He's able and because here we can see that Abraham was speaking very confidently to his servant, he was, he was so sure that guess what? This God that I serve is going to lead you to the right woman. So we can 
clearly see here that in this whole dating process, even a parent has a role that they can play. And one of them is to, one, they need to have faith regarding their, that their children will get the right spouse. Secondly, they also need to pray about this matter. Your level of confidence is extremely important because guess what? You do need to be spending some time praying for your children to marry the right person. And so let's move on to verse 4. The Bible says, Then the servant left, taking with him ten of his master's camels, loaded with all kinds of good things, from his master. He set out from Aram Naharim and made his way to the town of Nahor. He had the camels kneel down near the well outside the town. It was toward evening, the time the women go out to draw water. So now here I want us to learn a thing or two. So from these verses I can see that this servant was a wise man. So he did not go empty handed. So what did he do? He actually brought his A game. I call it his A plus game. This A plus game included that he took, he didn't go alone. He actually went with other, uh, he, he, he's, he left and he took 10 of his master's camels loaded with all kinds of good things from his master. So he didn't just go as a person empty handed but he carried the very best, all kinds of good things from his master. The truth of the matter is, as we are going out to meet the one, as we are in the search of the one, we do really need to bring our A plus game. Because guess what? That woman or that man deserves the very best. And you and I are going to give the very best. So you and I are going to carry our A plus game. We are going to carry what? all kinds of good things from our master and who's our master our heavenly father he's already given us some good gifts that are already in us he's given us some talents he's given us different abilities so those things are the ones we are going to carry so it's not necessarily that you do need to carry gold and silver well it's great if you have it, but again, there are still so many other things that are part of who you are, that are part of your personality, your, your, you know how the Lord has built you up, that you need to bring the very best. And we can see verse 11, the Bible is talking about the issue of timing. He said he had the camels kneel down near the well outside the town. It was toward evening, the time the women go out to draw water. So my dear. You do have to identify the right time for you. There's a perfect timing for you. This man understood that women go to draw water from the well. At what point? In the evening. So he didn't go there looking early in the morning when they are not there. He didn't go looking uh, at noonday when the sun is extremely hot. He went in the evening when women go to do what? When women get to draw water. Okay, so it's extremely important for you and I to identify the right time to actually seek out this partner. And then verse 12, the Bible says, Then he prayed, Lord, God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, please let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, drink and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant, Isaac. By this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. So there are a few things I also see in this particular scripture. And this is what I will say. Number one is that there's a place for prayer. If you're going out to identify the one, I tell you, without the Lord, this won't work. Because how will you know this is it? How will you know this is the one? Unless the Lord speaks to you and makes it very clear that you have actually met the one. Secondly, it is very important for you to be very clear. What do you want? How does this person look? How will I be able to identify that this is the one? And for him, he was very clear based on the fact that he knew his master well. He asked for a woman that would match, you know, meet the needs of who Isaac was. And so who was Abraham? He was an excellent man, a man who was, you know, 
had great wealth because I mean he carried 10 camels. Uh, you can be sure he was carrying a lot of good stuff, all kinds of good things. And we are going to see some of the things that he actually gave Rebecca. And we can, we can also tell that this man, apart from the fact that he was wealthy, he was living in the desert. I mean, we are talking about camels carrying stuff. So this kind of scenario is very different from what we were looking into last week when we spoke about the king, King Ahasuerus, who was looking for the queen. He was living in a palace. He was in charge of 127 provinces. So that's a man of influence. But when we look at Abraham, he's also a man of influence, but he's different. And he needs, his needs are also very different. So this prayer was actually spot on because the kind of a woman that Isaac needed was a woman that needed to be one who could serve. And this was extremely important. And so we are seeing that in verse 14, part, the part B, where it says, let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. Now there is normally this conversation of oh should I be the one who chooses? Should the Lord be the one who chooses for me? I would say you have you are always safe if the Lord chooses it for you. Because guess what? If you align your will to the Lord's will, you will never go wrong. But if you have worked so hard in making sure that it is your will at all times, my dear you are going to struggle. But guess what? If we continued to pursue, you know, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 normally reminds us, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be ye renewed in your mind so that you may be able to test and approve the good, the perfect and pleasing will of the Lord. So as we continue walking with God, then we get to identify what is perfect, what is his good, what is his pleasing, what is his perfect? So guess what? His perfect is what we need to pursue even as we look for the one. And then we can see and he's saying, by this I will know that you've shown kindness to my master. Let's move on to verse 15. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. The woman was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever slept with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up again. So, if you've watched part one, we spoke about King Ahasuerus. And King Ahasuerus had a list. And his list was, uh, according to Esther chapter 2 verse 2, it was a beautiful woman, young and a virgin. So those were the three qualifications, the physical appearance, the age, and the values. And with this particular, uh, in this case, when we look at the issue of Isaac, there are also some requirements here. One, it was a beautiful woman because, and we can clearly see this uh, from verse uh, 16, it says that the woman was very beautiful. Rebecca was a beautiful woman. Secondly, she was a virgin. So her values were also in line with what this, uh, what with what Isaac deserved, and thirdly is where we are going to see the distinguishing feature about the issue of service, where it's, where he was actually where the servant was praying that this woman would let out her jar and have a and you know not only would he offer him the drink but he would also offer to she would also offer to give a drink also to the camels. Now, let's move on to verse 17. The Bible says, um, The servant hurried to meet her and said, Please give me a little water from your jar. Now, let me speak to the young men out there. The thing is, you may go to the well. You may know the timing is right. You may know that this, I can identify a woman in this well, you know. Uh, so because this is, and this is the time when these women normally come out to fetch water. But at some point, you have to make a move because how else will you be able to, to get a wife unless you step out there and say, please give me a little water from your jar. So the truth of the matter is, I'm encouraging you today that if there is this young lady out there, 
you've gone out. You are at the well. It is time for you to get married. Please go make a step of faith in the direction that the Holy Spirit will actually show you the right woman because this servant had to do something about it. He's at the well and it's time. The women are already coming out. He doesn't know which one it is, but he steps out in faith and asks, please give me a little water from your jar. Then verse 18. This is what Rebecca said. Drink, my Lord, she said, and quickly lowered her jar to her hands and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too, until they have had enough to drink. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to the well to draw more water, and drew enough for all his camels. So now I want to speak to the young lady. My dear, guess what? This is that season also where you require discernment. Because, I mean, the young man has come, he's asked, May I have a drink? And Rebecca is here, is able to identify that this is it for me. This is the man. This is the right person. This is the right question from the right person. And so she says, drink, my Lord, from a, from a place of respect, from a place of honor. And she actually goes, she also brings her A game. She brings her A plus game. And we have said in this dating process, we are bringing our A plus game, okay? And so we see, she says, mm -mm, I'll not just offer you a drink, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw water even for your camels. Remember how many camels there were? There were 10 camels. And guess what? On average, a camel can drink 75 to 150 liters. So let's work with 75, yeah? So times 10. That will be 750 liters. Do you know how many 20 liter buckets those are? Or 20 liter jerry cans those would be? They are going to be 37.5 jerry cans. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of work. That's a lot of going back and forth. You can imagine how many times she went and drew the water from the well and carried it to the camels until the camel was able to fill up. And I mean, I'm talking about 750 liters. That's a lot of water. And that's a lot of work. So the truth of the matter is, as the young man is bringing his A game, the young lady is also bringing her A plus game. So we are all bringing on board what? Our very best. Because guess what? I honestly believe the one, the right one for me, deserves my best. The, and him also, because I'm his right one, also deserves the best. And so we are also going to give one another the very best. And so let's go to verse 21. It says, without saying a word, the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. Now hold up. This verse is reminding us that the man watched closely to do what? To learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. Sometimes we don't spend enough time watching. And I mean here, we are watching with our physical eyes at the same time we are spending some time in prayer. Because guess what? It is extremely important that we are sure. So, some people do look like they are it, but maybe they need a little more watching. And if you spent a little more watching, then you will know this maybe is not it. So, verse 22, it says, when the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold nursery weighing uh, a beka and two gold bracelets weighing 10 shekels and let me tell you something it is when the camels had finished doing what drinking that this man was able to identify i finally found the girl so guess what maybe it's that you have settled for less than what you deserve and it's extremely important for you to be patient in this journey, to be able to identify, is this truly the one? You had better hear the Lord. This person had better finish that work that they were supposed to be doing so that you can identify their it. Otherwise, that you'll be in trouble. And then secondly, after he has identified that this is the girl, what does he do? He marks out the territory. So he has a perfect timing for doing what? 
for uh, for doing the right thing marking a territory making a proposal so he takes out a gold nose ring and he takes out some bracelets and gives this girl so verse 23 then he asked whose daughter are you please tell me is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night i don't know about you but guess what this is a wonderful pickup line hmm? is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night is there room in your father's house for us hmm? is there room in your father's house for us that is a you know a statement it's asking you know do we have a place are you single that's what he was asking because i mean if this girl was not single you should have said i'm sorry thank you for coming thank you for visiting but guess what this ain't it we don't have enough room you know and the feedback in verse 24 says, she answered him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son that Milka bore to Nahor. And she answered, we have plenty of straw and fodder, as well as room for you to spend the night. Can you see the feedback? Guess what? All this chasing around and saying, oh, no. You know what? Let's get to the place where our no is a no and our yes is a yes. And when it comes to this particular verse, it clearly shows me that Rebecca was also ready for this man. He, it was, she knew, also knew it was time for her to get married. Because guess what? She had the perfect answer. She said, I mean, she was asked, is there a room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She was like, she actually answered a question she was never asked. She says, we have plenty of straw and fodder. I mean, not only you as a person have a place, even your animals, your wealth, your riches, everything that belongs to you has room in my father's house. That is what she was saying. She was saying, I mean, I'm simply letting you know you can continue to mark this territory because guess what? You are the right. This is it for me. And verse 26, then the man bowed down and worshipped the Lord saying, praise be to the Lord, the God of my master, Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master as for me. The Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. The young woman ran and told her mother's household about these things. So we can see that what was happening between Rebecca and the servant of Abraham, the parents were not there. The father, the mother was not there. The siblings were not there. So she was out there alone, just doing life as usual. She was in the business of simply doing her life. Simply going to fetch water like women do in the evening. So it was just in her normal day-to-day -day life. So the truth of the matter is, meeting the one does not necessarily mean, you know, that there was going to be a thunderstorm. Or I don't know, there was going to be a whirlwind and that's how you're going to identify. No, it will just be on another normal day like any other day when you meet the one. But the thing is, is your heart in a place where you can discern that this is the one really the issue here is that the lord would give us a spirit of discernment for such a time as this that we can tell we have met the right person and we are able to test you know the bible says that we should test all spirits because guess what not all of them are from the lord not all the answers are from the lord so we need to be extremely careful not to make the mistake of assuming that every single man that comes our way is the right one or every single young woman that comes our way is the right one and also what this text actually also tells me is that there you know how there's this thing where people feel like there's this just one human being in the whole world that's meant for you and if you miss out on this one you ain't gonna get married that is not true because clearly we can see it was evening it was when other women go to you know fetch water and so guess what there were several women who were fetching water at that particular time but it was that this servant was led by the lord to identify the right one and guess what did he know that he's going to meet you know like did he know at the point he was going to the well who it was going to be he had no idea but what did he do 
He knew the perfect timing. He knew he was ready and he knew where to get this girl. So the truth of the matter is we should be in a position to identify where we can get this person. So guess what? I really hope that these verses encourage your heart concerning the fact that there's a perfect timing. There's the right person that we need to be led of the Holy Spirit that you and I are going to bring our A game. We are not going to entertain mediocrity at all. The fact that we are believers, mm -mm -mm, you and I need to do our very best. Our A plus game needs to be top. Because guess what? You do need to match, you know, being the kind of helper. As a woman, you do need to be the right kind of helper to the man that God has prepared for you. Because guess what? You are going to marry a ruler. But you need to know he may be a different ruler because for you, if you're an Esther, you're definitely going to find a king, Ahasuerus, who's in charge of 127 provinces. Girl, that is not a small task. And if you're Rebecca, you have this, you are going to go and meet a young man. You know, the, his father's son, the one who's going to inherit all the wealth, all the camels, all the cattle, all the mules, Every, I mean, this man was a well-to-do man. And where did he live? He lived in the desert. So guess what? The issue of watering animals, you'd better be comfortable with that because guess what? You might be doing that a lot. And you might also be having so many servants that will need to be taken care of. If you, your heart is not ready for service, then you need to do a lot more work because... Service is part of that responsibility that you're going to have when it comes to being a wife to this particular man. So I hope you're encouraged. I hope you're challenged to look at this process differently. But really, mine is to challenge you and I. Please, let's take our, let's bring our A game. Like, I mean, let's bring an A plus game because that man deserves an A game from me. And guess what? That, you know, I also deserve the very best. I also deserve the A plus game from him because this is what we need to do all our life. Giving our very best. It's the least that you could do. So until next week, bye-bye.